a bridge that evokes memories, for Marian Zakowski as well. As a Polish intelligence agent, he was caught spying in the United States. The day he was exchanged across the bridge seems like yesterday. We drove here in a car. I could hear the Americans talking. They were very nervous. It was a dark brown van that drove to the middle of the bridge and turned around back towards the west. It was rather strange. I had the feeling they were preparing for a gunfight instead of an exchange of people. But Sakowski was allowed to return to the east. In exchange, 23 Western spies were released by the Soviets. That was the price paid for the Polish officer and three other Eastern agents. Posing as a Polish businessman, Zakowski spied on the U.S. defense industry in the 1970s. He became known as the Silicon Valley spy. I found out everything possible about radar systems. I also obtained documents on cruise missiles and the Patriot and Hawk air defense systems. Some of them were classified top secret all the way up to 2007. Exchanging spies wasn't just a matter for intelligence agencies. It was first and foremost a political deal between the two sides. One of the men who helped bring those deals about, mediating between East and West, was Wolfgang Vogel, an East German lawyer. Norbert Pützel is an expert on the Cold War agent exchanges. The author for Spiegel News magazine knew Vogel personally. He was the middleman. He had no authority to make any decisions, but he had to negotiate his way through the competing interests of the countries and governments involved. Of course, not every spy had the same value. And for Erich Honecker, it was an opportunity. Having Vogel, an East German lawyer, managing all of this was highly prestigious. It put East Germany at the center of things. February 1986, the Gmienke Bridge. 25 years ago. The last Cold War exchange between East and West. Russian dissident Anatoly Sharansky was let go after spending years in the Soviet Gulag. Behind the scenes, negotiations took place for years. Agents from several countries were swapped, including Germans on both sides. West Berlin lawyer Ludwig Rehlinger was involved in their cases. In East Germany, it was mostly ordinary people who spied for the United States. If they were caught, punishment was harsh. People who wrote down license plate numbers were sentenced to life in prison. Some of them were freed in exchange for Marian Zakowski. In the agent swap, he was one of the big prizes. In the U.S., he had been sentenced to life for his espionage activities. On the outside, I maintained a facade, but on the inside, I was a mess. I knew my only hope of getting out was an exchange. I didn't care for whom or how many I would be exchanged for, as long as I got out and back home. The Glienicke Bridge was the scene of three major exchanges in the Cold War. After Mikhail Gorbachev became Soviet leader, the increased number of agents swapped was seen as a signal from Moscow. They were a sign that the Cold War was coming to an end and that the Soviets were willing to reach an agreement with the West. In my eyes, that was the most important thing politically, and that was subsequently confirmed. From that point on, dialogue was possible. Before then, we hadn't been talking at all. Gorbachev had shown, I'm ready to make concessions, I'm willing to compromise. See, you can have Sharansky. The West could celebrate a victory, and East Germany as well. Everyone was happy about it. Marian Zakowski was happy as well. 
the retired Polish intelligence agent enjoys returning to the bridge. I really feel better just being here. This bridge used to be called Unity Bridge, but for me, it was Freedom Bridge. I have to admit, I come here quite often. The former secret agent from the Cold War has become a successful author. Marian Zakowski knows what he's writing about. The world of espionage. <laughs>